Oh, fuck, Clay, and the emotional roller coaster of last night will be experienced on today's show. We'll get through all the stinkers, all the great plays. You don't want to miss it. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Going to be a great show. Excited to be with you. It's Megalodon week. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Man. Jason's already very breathy. Man. Don't, don't ruin the pipes before mm. the big two and a half plus hour extravaganza Wednesday. Two and a half? You're calling for a two and a half hour show? That'd be like the longest Megalodon of all time. Oh, the Mega Mega? The Mega Megalodon. Yeah. So we, uh, we're excited to be with you, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, Weekly Rewind, Studs, Stinkers, Stories, all a part of today's episode. Wednesday is the Megalodon Show. We'll preview everything, the Thursday games, the Thanksgiving Day games, and the uh, entire weekend. Got our special Turkey Day awards to dole out mm -hmm. uh, on the Megalodon as well. Uh not sure where to start today. We can get sophisticated in a moment. Sure. Uh, I will say it was really close to not being three of us today. Oh, very, very close. Yes. Um, I died. You were looking up. I hot, died last hot, night. Certain hotlines. That's right. Uh, uh, Jason and uh, I know people. They've heard the stories and the tales, and watching Jason lose and tilt is more entertaining for all of us, mm -hmm. except for him, of course. Last night, he was in another number one scoring versus number two scoring battle. Which is just impossible. Yes. This, the amount of times this has happened this season, statistically, I, some math wizard out there just needs to see how impossible it is that I am constantly in the, the, the first against the second or maybe third well, you, highest score of the week. You've all often reminded us that you are Truman from the Truman Show, so obviously mm. this is all being... It's all a plant. It's all... Yeah, it's just like writing a story for an episode. Okay, that's a pretty cool story. Yeah. Well, not most weeks for you, but this week you ended up in Losing. a situation where uh, you had lost with the Kittle touchdown. You you were upset, and... Uh, Look, I made a pivot early in the morning from Carson Wentz once Alshon was out. I made a pivot to go f to the waivers and grab... Ryan Tannehill and A.J. Brown put that stack into my lineup. It came to fruition. I should get – I have the highest points in the league. I'm going to win. All that needs to happen is that, like, Kittle can't have a giant – I'm up 30, and I've, I'm going against Kittle and Aaron Rodgers, and I've got Mostert. And Mostert is pretty much not involved in the game. Has, like, you know, I don't know, two carries. Aaron Rodgers is sucking, and then Kittle goes off, and that bomb touchdown to Kittle. That was I the lose. end. I lose. I lost. It was over because he's still got Aaron Rodgers, what's, who's in a game script to come back, and I'll, all I've got is Mostert. What's uh, <clears throat> what's what's after life, Jason? Death. I've, I, like, I mean, I'm, no, I'm sure you, but you uh, died. I, just, I like, send it. Did you look it down in your body and um, I I blacked out. <laughs> I don't remember. So I turned nothing? the game off. I genuinely turned the game off. I did. I was so proud of myself. We have our, our house decorated for Christmas. We've got these three like Christmas penguins by the fireplace where I was watching. Christmas penguins? I, yeah, I don't know. Let's move just on, Mike. Let's move the, on. From the North Pole, I assume. And and so there's these there's three Christmas no penguins. penguins in, like I said, Mike, just move on. I can't believe that those <laughs> penguins are intact right now. You wanted to kill the penguins? I saw. I visualized the smashing <laughs> of these penguins. They were destroyed. They're hollow. I, w I mean, we would be picking those up for weeks, but I, I just stormed off upstairs, turned the TV off, and I was done in a black hole. And then later I get a message that piqued my interest <laughs> from Al Borland, my opponent, and I was like, wait, what happened? No, I don't have a chance. I already lost. Raheem Mostert saved your life. And I, <laughs> I imagine 
I imagine you'll be painting pictures of him for years to come if this ends up winning you a title this year. So uh, it was an eventful night. Jason did not come out on the wrong end of it for once. I did it. And, uh, I, yeah, I know what you're saying, though, Mike. Like, right? It's the near-death experience. Like, you, yeah. some people, you know, they say you see – it's like you're looking down at yourself, and he probably saw his body on the couch. He saw the Postmates guy coming to the door from a, you know, from that angle. But I, he just – he saw dead penguins. I looked down on dead penguins. That's what I saw. <laughs> All right, I have more to add, but let's go ahead and jump into Monday Punday Reactions. Get sophisticated with you. Mm, not – Lock it. No, no, lock it. Lock it. Baker Yeafield. <laughs> what? He it's did simple it. and yet true. It's sophisticated. Oh no, Mike Amari Gooser. He's he's dead to me. Hey, on the road, he's certainly dead. He is dead to me. Jalen Samuel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that one was purposeful. We've got Ryan Tanathrill. <laughs> although I did hear. Tenny Tenny Bills, y'all. Yes. Not bad. Keep them coming. Noah can't. All right. Okay. No, no one can't, can't against the Bills, by the way. <laughs> Lamison Crowder. Oh, yes. Ah, <sighs> Cyrell Williams. Mm. And Tyler, I'm a real Boyd. The Boyd is back in town. Yes, yes, yes. Mike can't handle the Amari Cooper... Goose, despite the, I'm sure, intellectual acknowledgement of the rain and the wind, and I've heard you talk about rain and wind before, and the matchup with the number one defense, and yet you are here in this visceral place because you sort of apologized to him three weeks ago, and he's repaid you with three catches for 39 mm -hmm. yards over like total in two games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then I, I apologized to him, and he uh, threw poop in my face. And he is completely dead to me. Yes, I acknowledge all of those things. Right. Uh, of the, you know, he was up against it. You know who else was up against it? The entire Dallas Cowboys office. Did Randall Cobb have zero receptions for zero yards? He did not. Did Michael Gallup have zero receptions for zero yards? No, he had receptions for yards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike is uh, in unhappy. Fa in fairness. He uh, cost us a League One victory. In he, fairness. He's, he actually has cost me multiple victories a across my leagues. Um. Well, that's on you for rostering him. Um, you are no, always against Amari Cooper. He did have a very nice reception that was called back on a penalty, and then he almost caught that ball at the end of the game. <laughs> he so, sure did. In fairness to him. <laughs> I like his defense was he almost caught a pass. Uh, uh, I will add this, though, because we're, we're finishing up week 12. In a lot of leagues, next week is the final week before the playoffs. And we talked all week, you know, our streamers, and then a lot of the topics on last week's show were related to who's going to be that secret player to win you a title. And two of the top four quarterbacks on the week, their names were brought up last week. Baker Mayfield, Ryan Tannehill, Mike, you brought up Sam Darnold at times during the week. I just want to illustrate why... Those names are brought up, and what happened this week? Here are the top quarterbacks on the week. Very important week for a lot of fantasy teams. Number one, Ryan Tannehill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number two, Sam Darnold. Number three, Jameis Winston. Number four, Baker Mayfield. Kyle Allen. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Those are the top six names. The Kyle Allen one is mind-blowing. Yeah, no one in the right mind. Last week, I play him against Atlanta. He's terrorizing. Yes. Or two weeks ago. But... I'm illustrating that Mitch Trubisky was number nine, okay? Jimmy Garoppolo was 11. The only staples, Breeze at seven, Josh Allen fought his way to eight, Deshaun Watson at nine. So people will win titles with streaming yes. quarterback. Yeah, matchups matter at the quarterback and position. And it takes guts. It takes guts. It takes uh, a, a little bit of luck. But Ryan Daniel is the fourth best playoff schedule. Baker has the best playoff schedule for the quarterback. Both of those guys are going to be relevant every week the rest of the year. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Uh, Baker has looked good over the last few games, even in his, uh, you know, before this week when he had very difficult matchups, he still outperformed what other quarterbacks were doing against those defenses. And so you kind of have a glimpse of it. And then you have Ryan Tannehill. The reason I went with him in our scoring format, he had yet to have a start below 24 fantasy points. 
he's just been really, really solid with this offense. When I mean, you've got a stack against Derrick Henry and play to that, and then those uh, p play action over the top there. And Darnold has been good now three games in a row as well. So, yeah, these, these are important names. 18, Russell Wilson. 19, Aaron Rodgers. 20, Carson Wentz. 22, Matt Ryan. 23, Dak Prescott. So, it doesn't mean you pivot. It just means that you gotta you got to look at the weather now. That's affecting games this yeah. time of year. And you got to look at these opportunities to take advantage of matchups. Yeah, this was the first week where weather had an impact on several games. Where you, you, you saw it. I mean, that was part of what made me pivot away from Wentz. The Alshon being out and the weather supposed to be bad. And then obviously with the, the New England game, we knew that that was going to be. And the thing is, this is why you follow us on socials. Watch Mike's uh, live thing. Because through the week... When you're listening to the pod, that's the one piece where we try to have knowledge. You know, we'll talk about, oh, it's expected to be cold or windy or rainy. But you don't always know on a Tuesday what the weather is going to be like in real life on Sunday. So make sure you're you're following there for those updates this time of year. Yeah, I mean, the truth is our rankings, even though they go up every Tuesday afternoon, they get changed the most toward, heading into the weekend. And so the start, sit results, that type of stuff gets adjusted. That's just fantasy football life. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right, we did find out this morning, Eric Ebron, Colts tight end, going to injured reserve. He needs procedures on both of his ankles. I've never seen that before. Like the double up? Both ankles you need think one surgery? How, uh, well, it's it's almost like... I'm you, getting one done. It's a twofer. It's like a, a BOGO. It's yeah. A, it's, a, it's, a buy, it's a buy yes. one, get one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, they're like, well, we can make you stronger in both. I feel yeah, like the pay, only pay way surgery. the only way that like you have surgery on both angles is, oh yeah, I, I jumped out the window, right, <laughs> and landed poorly. It's possible, but uh, he'll be out, which means you know you can glance Jack Doyle's way. There hasn't if if it goes the way of this past week for the Indianapolis offense, you're pretty much sitting back, waiting for them to hand the ball off five times in a row and hoping that your guy is the one on the other end of the one pass per six plays. That's how it felt. Ryan Griffin was signed to a three-year contract extension before the game over the weekend. This is a commitment to a guy that's been very productive. And there it is. He scored again. Sucks for Herndon. Yeah, Julio Jones exited with a shoulder injury briefly, stayed in the locker room after halftime, Missed a portion of the fourth quarter. Obviously didn't deliver the kind of game you hoped against a uh, the last place secondary in, in football. Yeah, this was the the Falcons had a lot of a lot of injuries through this game. They they lost several pieces. Obviously that you already lost Hooper. I think Brian Hill was out at one point. Julio was out for a while. Um, yeah, it was a rough injury game. I guess there were some whispers in the bushes around the Jags who with Nick Foles, have, I believe, yet to win a game. That is correct. Uh, Doug Marone said he has not considered a quarterback change. From watching those games, I don't know if a quarterback change is the solution when it, you give up 400, 500 yards to Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry. Henry. Yeah, yeah, Foles did not seem to be the issue for the Jaguars yesterday. There was nothing where I was like, man, he looks like Trubisky here. No, it was giving up points on every play on the defensive side. Robert Woods is, quote, looking good, wouldn't mm. commit to him in the Monday night game. Good if, hair day. That's if you so are weird. Why, well, this is, this is gamesmanship, McVay. right? This is, this is McVay. I mean, his, so he's going to play, right? I assume that he is going to your play. Your options, if you need backup um, plays, you could have Josh Reynolds on your bench. You could have Gerald Everett flexed in over Woods if Woods got sat down again. We expect him to play, and I don't expect him to have a high ceiling against the Ravens. Yeah, and, uh, of course, Brendan Cooks should play as well. So this will sure. be – First time in a little while where you've got uh, the three Stooges together. I did not rank Brandon Cooks very high at all this week. That's fair. So we'll see. Weekly Rewind News and Notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Do not miss a single piece of fantasy football breaking news. Multiple ankles. <laughs> all that kind of news. Also, I mean, we I didn't throw it in, but Gigantor season. <laughs> what, what What is the day? It is the, the 25th of November. It is the time. It is the year of the Gigantor. Mo Alley Cox, back up to the backup <laughs> tight Mike, end. Mike in, never in concerns himself with contact. No. Oh my goodness! I just saw what is above my head. 
Wow. What, a George Kittle a picture? A George Kittle picture. Would you have been able to handle that had you lost? No. Right? Growing out of no, your head if there? No, I, if, I, if I came in and just now noticed after the loss on his bomb <laughs> touchdown that he was above my head, but the, I don't believe Brooks would have done that. There. Yeah. The, no, I, the this, picture. This was a, an homage to, to Owl. The picture is George Kittle spreading his arms out wide in a posture that Al Borland clearly walked around his house in after the touchdown. What is the tattoo on his left bicep? Is a squiggly line? Uh, it is. A, it looks like a mountain range, Mike. What is going on there? It's to symbolize the peaks and valleys of fantasy football. Let's okay. get into the studs. This week's fantasy stud muffins. I don't believe that any of the podcast listeners could see it. <clears throat> no, no, that, that's that's true. They can't. But I'm, I want to know if if you know what's going on with George Kittle's tattoo here. All right, we did mention him. Ryan Tannehill was a monster. Two rushing touchdowns, two passing, some big plays. Uh, in his five starts, he's been the quarterback 13, 11, 5, 11, 1. From what I understand... The reason he went to Tennessee to begin with was because he was not going to go to a place that he didn't have the opportunity to take over as the quarterback. He was ready, and he's got incentives. And on the sideline, one of the saddest things that has ever been witnessed was Marcus Mariota on the side. He had his helmet on. Yeah. He was ready to I'm go. I'm ready to go, coach. Just at, at the whole moment. time, every time they went to him, his helmet is on. I'm like, I've never seen this before. I've never seen a backup. Just staying warm. Like just, he's got his helmet on completely <laughs> ready to go play. But Tannehill's been great, and the, the news around uh, town in Tennessee is that they believe he could be their actual future, not just like, hey, he's playing well. That's But they, they think maybe they found the guy that can get them – to where they want to go, so that's that's important. He'll to have know. to get paid though, right? He's a free agent. Yes. Oh man, Oakland, or I'm sorry, is it Indianapolis? The next one on the schedule, then Oakland, Houston. That's nice. Very nice. Those are playoff weeks. Jameis Winston is so Jameis Winston. <laughs> he does what he does, man. He he always gives you. Here's how the timeline goes in my head. You play him, right? You stream him. There's a we said to do it. We pivoted to him from Wentz and in our League One, and he always likes to start the game real cute with yes. like a oh, yeah. like a sack fumble and then maybe do like a little tip pass interception. Mm -hmm. Maybe and, a pick six. Oh yeah, he's willing. And then uh, you you want to die for playing him. You're you, like, this is the biggest mistake I've ever made in my entire life. You like, rage quit watching TV. Sure. And then he always ends up in the top five or so. And I believe six straight games of 300 yards. So he threw two interceptions. He may lead the league in both touchdowns and interceptions, which has been done once before. And he's Jameis Winston. They won the game. Yeah, Sam Darnold, Kyle Allen. We talked about these guys earlier. Baker Mayfield, monster game, revenge game. Uh, Darnold, Baker, they were both starts of the week this week. Ryan Fitzpatrick. I've never seen a player celebrate so heavily he wants to that i was talking to jason about this yesterday like ryan fitzpatrick is i i love this man so much he wants to win he is old this he is 37 years old he is playing He's 37 that's what he just turned 37 look he is playing for nothing for nothing other than that he loves playing football. you're 37 aren't you jay i oh my gosh i am <laughs> wow i was like I'm, no i'm 36 <laughs> But I am 30. So Fitzpatrick Fitz just wants to win so much. Don't you get the feeling that like Fitzpatrick, when he's 57, will, and his team is down eight touchdowns in a C League flag football? Oh, team. He will run if he scores. He'll take up running. He will be just as excited. Yes, 100. percent He's just he's a competitor, and you know there's some guys that you don't have the right when you're down multiple scores to celebrate. Totally get that. But if you're Tannehill. This is <laughs> Fitzpatrick. Or, yes, if you're Fitzpatrick, you you you're 37 yeah, and enjoy you just it. you just probably got truck sticked on your way to the end zone. You celebrate. You crack open that Pepsi. All right, running back studs. Let's go, Leonard Fournette. He scored, guys. He 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 scored two touchdowns. He did. That's that's supposed to be illegal, but he, he did it anyway. Did you see what coming. happened after he scored? 
he did the thing that like a sailor does that when they get back to land and they go smell the ground like they step onto ground for the uh, first time oh, like, like the uh he hadn't been there in months like robin hood that's yeah. what yeah. i was getting out of the boat he, he grabs the sand oh yeah yeah he had 97 robin of Moxley. the big part is what's so fun about owning uh fournette and fantasy having him on your roster is that regardless of the game script, he's out there on third down. 12 Tw- targets. Yeah, 12. And this this is something where like, okay, Foles takes over. How's it going to affect Fournette? How's it going to affect Chark? 12 targets, 9 for 62. A troubling defense, yet he never leaves the field under any circumstance. Yeah, and, and his playoff schedule is fantastic. This week, Tampa Bay is not a great matchup for running backs, but after that, the Chargers, the Raiders, the Falcons in the playoff weeks – Fournette is just – he's been absolutely excellent this year. All the injury concerns and the pass-catching concerns, you know, he, he still was involved last year, but those were some of the issues. Uh, I mean, he's he's put all that to rest. Derek Henry. Mm. He does Derek Henry things. Super fun, I believe, uh, to have him run in a monster touchdown and then they fumble the ensuing kickoff and he takes the next carry directly into the end zone. Two touchdowns in 14 seconds. Yeah, it was basically like a 71-yard double touchdown. Right. That's, that's, that's what you got <laughs> from Derrick Henry. But I do have a stat I want to pull up here for you from Rich Rebar. His past 16 games played, Derrick Henry has 303 rushing attempts. He has 16, uh, 1,616 yards, wow. which is 5.3 a carry. He has 18 rushing touchdowns with a touchdown in 12 of 16 games. And then he has two receiving touchdowns. So 20 touchdowns in his last 16 games played. The narrative on Derrick Henry is often, well, he needs a touchdown. He can't yeah. score. He needs the touchdown to be relevant because he's not a pass catcher. Well, here's the thing. He gets one. <laughs> he, gets, yeah, he gets two. He, he's, he's, he's just he been a beast. Does. You can't at this point say anything other than he is awesome. I mean, obviously we knew combine-wise he's one of the – most physical freak athletes of all time. And, you know, you've seen that. I mean, people don't want to tackle this guy. I sure wouldn't. No. No, and he wears people down in the truest, like, Bill Callahan way. Right. Like, he actually makes you depressed. It's Marshawn used to do this. Yes. You just get tired of dealing with it. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was great again. Nick Chubb had a monster game. He's such a good runner. He's the RB6 on the year. And then Jonathan Williams from Thursday – that was a big game. We've talked about him, but 26 for 104 and 1. Let's not forget Jonathan Williams could have some relevance. And then what do we make of this? Rashad Penny. Yeah, this one's tough. Oh. Rashad Penny ended up 14 for 129 and 1, had a 58 yard touchdown jaunt. Looked great. And Chris Carson fumbled twice, twice. in a row. Back to literally the same drive. Fumbled, they recovered. Then they went for a handoff, and he thought it was a fake. Yeah, and, and then, Russell was unhappy. Oh, yeah. Now, he did get back in the game after that. He wasn't benched at that point, which was good to see, but obviously this is a concern this season. And when you combine it with Rashad Penny's – I mean, what, what people want to know, like, yeah, should no. we be worried about Chris Carson? You really – he's not going to – Leave the field. They're a nine and two football team. He's been a, he's been literally a top five touch leader on their way to nine and two. That's my takeaway. Will Rashad Penny earn himself some more time with this? Yeah, I think you'll probably see a couple of games where the the total touches for Carson is down. I don't think he's in jeopardy of losing his job because you can't trust Rashad Penny in that office to do all of the intricacies that Carson has done for for yeah. a long time. The thing that surprised me, and this was before the fumbles. So on the game as a whole, you have Chris Carson with eight carries and Rashad Penny with 14. But prior to the fumbles, Penny was out touching him. Right. Yeah, uh, Carson didn't look great yesterday. No, something was weirdly yeah. off. We were talking about when we were watching that game, Mike and I were like, like Chris Carson was in la-la land. Yeah. Hey, before we move to our wide receiver studs, I want to thank today's sponsor, <laughs> Quip. Quip wants you to know the one single discovery that matters most for your dental care. It's simply this. If you have good habits, you're good, man. This means brushing for two minutes, twice a day, flossing regularly. And Quip makes it simple with their electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity tooth paste it's it's an electric toothbrush it's got sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer got 30 second pulses lets you know oh 
time to switch. Oh, time to switch sides. And now I have completed the brush. I am not shortchanging my teeth. I'm getting them clean. I've got my quip. I talk. I look, look, I do all these quip reads because I love my quip. My family is outfitted. We are a quip family. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get quip today starting at $25. Look, if you go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, you're going to get your first refill free. That's right. They they set you up with a subscription so you, you get the fresh brush when you need it on the dentist recommended schedule. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash footballers. Quip, the good habits company. All right, and we want to introduce the Capital One Walmart Rewards card. Earn 5% back at Walmart Online. Games for the kids. Headphones for dad. A laptop for mom. Doesn't matter. You get 5% back at Walmart Online. You also earn 2% at Walmart in-store, restaurants, and travel, and 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. What's in your wallet? Terms and conditions apply. Capital One in A. All right, wide receivers, it was a Godwin week. Mm-hmm. That, means sure a, that means a lot. And he was he was so good. I, I missed both of the touchdowns of his live and when I came back and saw each they were they were just all he's, they're preposterous he's so good yeah. man yeah he won a lot of people their matchups this week went seven for 184 and two on eight targets Jarvis Landry revenge game came to fruition oh in a the revenge huge, used a huge way 10 for 148 and two on 13 targets Beckham also had a nice game, six for eighty-four and one on eight targets, but Landry yeah. beat him out again. He fi- Beckham finally scored. Wee. Yeah, and right when he came out of the slot on that play, I knew Beckham would be open for a touchdown. But then you wondered, does Baker take the shot? Does he right and make the throw? And he did. DJ Moore has been outstanding. We've been talking about him for quite a while. The numbers he had been putting up without scoring, almost the Leonard Fournette of the wide receiver position. But he scored twice, six he, for one twenty-six and two. He is fifth in receiving yards, and he's playing with Kyle Allen, who played really well. Yeah, this really, really game. well. Yes, you, you you see that Kyle Allen has the upside to have monster games, but he can implode as well. Regardless, when the targets are coming, you know you you've been talking about that over the last couple of weeks, Andy. How many targets? You know, DJ Moore's been leading the league in uh, the last stretch of games. So, uh, yeah, he's great and and talented. First-round pick, don't forget, this is what he's supposed to be. It's kind of like yeah. the breakout we've seen of Cortland Sutton. It's not just like, oh, who's this guy? He's been playing well. It's like, oh, this he was drafted to be a superstar wide receiver, and now he's showing that he can be. Yeah, actually, both Jarvis Landry and DJ Moore are now within one point of being a wide receiver one on the season. Do, do you think either of those guys ends up finishing there? Yeah, both. Yeah, I, I, I think both have a legit shot. If I had to pick one because of the upcoming schedule, I think the number one wide receiver for the Browns would be there, which is Jarvis Landry. I mean, DJ Moore's schedule is not half bad either. Washington, Atlanta, Seattle. That's the next three. I mean, the, the targets are so safe for both of these guys. I, I, I think they end up there. All right, DeAndre Hopkins had the big game Thursday night. A.J. Brown, four for 135. Jason streamed him to his best career game. In terms of yardage, five targets. You're always playing with fire with any yes. pass catcher in Tennessee because the offense is Derrick Henry. Well, yeah. and AJ Brown. I mean, AJ Brown, he came through because he had the the huge play. And if you look back at just what he has done for his game logs and for fantasy football, if he doesn't hit on the big play, then it's it's a pretty bad fantasy. Day yeah, for Brown. And, and to to speak to that because you know people are seeing. Uh, I I streamed him. I did. I was down, in fact, in this matchup between me and Al Borland here. Uh, I lost Marlon Mack, and he played Jonathan Williams while I stupidly played <laughs> Jordan Wilkins. So I started out in a giant hole, and I knew I had to come back. The upside, you know, you, you, you have certain players where their floor is very low. A.J. Brown's floor is still very low. The targets just aren't there for him. You know, four targets two weeks ago, five targets even this week. On a monster, but you've seen massive big play potential. So that he's the type of player you play in those situations where you need 
a ceiling. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't chase him, but he's another player that's going to continue to emerge. And if Tannehill comes back next year. Just and- get him some targets, man. A.J. Brown, if we can get him in that 8 to 10 target range, he's going to be a, he'll be he a would monster. Be great. All right, Michael Thomas is incredible. Yes. James Washington <laughs> ends up with the game we hoped for from Devlin Hodges. The James Washington touchdown awesome. is a thing of beauty. Where <laughs> I mean, a, a little, it was a little bit of a clown show on the defense because uh, uh, someone fell down, but then James Washington's incredibly timed stiff arm to put the DB uh, on the ice skates and have him fall over, or fall down. It was it was a great play by Washington, but that's really what his his fantasy day of three for ninety eight and a touchdown was one big touchdowns, one big score. It was huge. Allen Robinson, Jason started the week, ended up six for 131 and one on 10 targets. It took them a while to get going. They eventually did. Calvin Ridley, your start of the week, six for 85 and a touchdown on 14 targets. Well, you got to give the wink to Russell Gage, eight for 76 That's on 10 right. targets. Mm. No, it, the, That's a wink, a, a wink of a performance. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Eight for 76 from a guy like Russell Gage that you're picking up off of waivers to play over some bad matchup or injured player. Or, or like Amari guy. Cooper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you're certainly happy with 8 for 76. Uh, are you interested in Gage moving forward? Just in the right matchup. Yeah. And uh, looking at his schedule, no. <laughs> All right, very, very well. Hey, Debo is officially oh. on fire for fantasy purposes. <laughs> with his two targets? Well, he had a touchdown. And he did. three consecutive games in the teens. He's clearly a valuable real-world asset for the Niners team. You do worry about the targets going forward now that Kittle was back and, and Emmanuel Sanders was on the field, but he's he's broken out, right? That's official. Three solid fantasy games in a row, two of which had plenty of targets over 100 yards. He can get it done. Whether or not you want to stay in those flames, you know, next week at Baltimore, probably not. Probably not. Probably not, but the last three games he has, uh, really, four of the last five. He's had double-digit uh, fantasy points. Are you jumping into the fire at all with Robbie? Robbie Anderson, who went four for 86 with a touchdown. Touchdown think, back-to-back game. I yeah. think you can because Gets of Cincinnati. the matchup. Cincinnati-Miami, I'm willing to flex Robbie Anderson. You're, you're playing with fire. He's not a high-target guy either. Tyler Boyd, five for 101 and one. The squeaky wheel got a few more targets, got nine of them. Ended up playing well. I'm not buying in. To Boyd? I am not buying into Tyler Boyd. He's had plenty of targets on the season, and he just hasn't been that good, and his quarterback is terrible. He had a great game. He has That's, the Jets next week I at get, home. I get it. I mean, he. But what does had, buying in mean? Are you willing to flex Tyler Boyd? Uh, I mean. Uh, Robbie Anderson or Tyler Boyd? Cole Beasley or Tyler Boyd? Uh, I would I would order those Robbie Anderson, Tyler Boyd, Cole Beasley. Okay. That's interesting. I think I still. Uh, who else are they going to throw to in Cincinnati? <laughs> Uh, His touchdown yeah. was such a duck from Ryan Finley. Exactly, the ball was like spinning on its well. He had his horizontal access, and he also had a, a, a access a, a bicep reception, which was pretty incredible. Too. Yeah, he's a good player. Yes, just needs a quarterback. There's a few players that you look at and you're like, will they ever be freed from the shackles of their circumstances? <laughs> like you watch Terry McLaurin play. Oh, like every oh. play, like every play Terry McLaurin makes. Is a special play. He's always open, and it's all the hands catches and and always wide open. For, he had a touchdown. There wasn't anybody within f- forty feet of him, and he gets airmailed by Haskins. And you're like, are we going to deal with this for Terry McLaurin for multiple years while Haskins is taking selfies on the sideline? I think Haskins is doing a good enough job of replacing himself. So I don't I don't think we're going to have to deal with it for they a long won. time. They won. They won, which is bad news for their pick and and you know speaking of uh Tyler Boyd and the Cincinnati Bengals they are almost locked into that number one pick now pretty close it would be very difficult from here on out for them to lose that spot hey this is why you wait on George Kittle six for 129 and one including the monster touchdown too good to bench for the likes of Dallas Goddard the tight ends I don't don't know if you guys realize just how gross it was this week but here's so the the big three at the top Kittle Ertz Jared Cook monster games if you played them you're extremely happy 
But they, they were followed up by Gasicki, Caden Smith, mm, everybody's Logan strong. Thomas. Oh, quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals several years ago. Uh, Ryan Griffin and Greg Olson. Those those were guys you played in, in Eric Ebron. And, but number 10 here, I, I mentioned him in passing. Jaden? Jaden Graham, who came out, had a 50-yard reception right to start the game, does nothing else, ends up as the tight end 10 on the week. Yeah, Dallas Goddard stunk it up, fumbled. Eagles offense was they ridiculous. Stunk. Ryan Griffin had the touchdown, but he was just that three, was it. Just three for thirteen. Yeah, yeah. You, you're bringing up guys that ranked fifth on the week that had 28 yards. You Logan, know, that's yeah, three Thomas. three for thirteen was Ryan Griffin. He was the tight end seven. Whoa. He had a great week. He was he was a good play this week. He had 13 yards and was a good play. That's the tight end <laughs> landscape, no doubt. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right, we had some guys stink mm. it up, poop in their big boy pants. No one more than Matthew Ryan. Start what? of the week. Yeah, this one was a an unfortunate fart of the week. <laughs> yeah, it, look. It 23 was, for 46, it 271. Was, it was bad, and I don't really understand why it was bad like watching the game is just you know obviously he missed Julio at times it just wasn't working but you know you watch other you know I watch Carson Wentz and I get why it's not working you know why just everything is n nobody is no open. Lane Johnson no Alshon no Djax no Nelson Aguilar exactly. no Jordan Howard and in this game yeah you missed Julio for a while but you've got other options here yes. and it just this isn't a defense that can stop many people and Matt Ryan did not get it done well this what's is, funny is Ridley did but it was his touchdown came from Matt Schaub yeah that's funny um one of the things that you know we remember from yesteryear when uh, the the Falcons were a really good team Matt Ryan is not a garbage time quarterback when he's down right like it's really weird yeah, usually true. when when a when a quarterback's in a real down position they got to play catch up that that's good for fantasy Matt Ryan has never been a garbage time quarterback he just doesn't you know when they're when they're really down and out he doesn't get the job done yeah Russell Wilson not a great fantasy game just 25 passing attempts just 13 completions Russell Wilson has been quarterback 14 or worse in four out of his last five games I, I want to say something here this is what's happened with Russell Wilson and Amari Cooper is very bad for us, Jason. Very bad. <laughs> because are you, are you counting them? Yes. It, it's, it's very very. What's your defense after counting them? Oh, it's not a defense. Oh, uh, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to defend. I uh. was just shocked at the fact that you know what. This is week twelve. We we were in. So he's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six of his twelve. No math wizard, but I think that's half of them. Yeah. Where he's outside the top fourteen at the quarterback position. Well, and this is why I said it's bad for us, because we are we already kind of knew Mike didn't have the ability to really apologize wholeheartedly. We wi we witnessed it, yeah. and now he never will. No, it's impossible. because he's his his uh, staunch, stubborn lack of apologies are being proven over the back half with Cooper and Russell in a way that will just steal him and his cold heart. Wait. Hold on. So what it sounds like what you're saying to me that you're right is, is I won't apologize because I was right. Because you won't you apologize right. because of your cold dark heart. <laughs> yes. That's what I heard. I'm saying that <laughs> it, look, Cooper deserved an apology at the time. Russell deserved an apology at the time, and yet you are right. Yes, mistakes. To, I am. I will never apologize again. I know. That's my <laughs> lesson learned. That's the whole point of what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I might have been in the wrong, but I learned something once upon a time. Russell to never Wilson apologize. Taught, taught me something that in the end I'll end up right. Look, uh, are, are you happy or sad that you have Russell Wilson? I have. Uh, that's a great question. I have. I don't have him anywhere because of where my stance was at the beginning of the season, and that. Week seven, that felt really, really bad. But the people who have Russell, are you happy Brooks, you have him? You traded for Russell in our dynasty league. You've got a great team. You're competing for the title. Are you as a on a, on a whole right now? Are you happy with Russell? I am because I would have lost weeks 
those those yes, big boom weeks. The I last definitely five would have lost without him. Yeah, he can win you a week for sure. The last five QB 18, 17, 1, 14, 18. Gets to play Minnesota, then the Rams. It's just interesting. It really it, is. It, it is. The yeah. nice thing, by is the way, with Brooks Russell, and I. Oh, go ahead. The, the nice thing is with Russell is these bad games, right? You know, 15, 15, 17, those type of points. Those are bad games you can absolutely still win. The, he yeah. didn't, yeah, he, yes, he didn't that's crush true. you, and that's why I think Brooks is right to say you are happy with Russell because he either comes out and just wins you a week or he still does enough to where if the rest of your – he's not – You were beat at the position those weeks, though. Yes, you were but he's beat not by Kyle your, Allening you to, you know, sure. uh, nothingville. No doubt, no doubt. Brooks and I, very, very likely that we're facing head-to-head -head in our Dynasty League and the winner is in the playoffs and the loser's out. So okay. I hope you're – and we've had some epic matches before, Brooks. You stopped my perfect season once before. And then you destroyed me in the playoffs. Yes, yes. And here we are again. It's going to be fun. Oh, I remember that perfect season. That was the worst. And I lost it at like – I was like 12-0 and 0 or something like that. I Thank lost it on you, like Brooks. the last week from Brooks or second to last week. I did win that title though. You did? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I really did. The, the loss didn't really hold me back. Yeah. Well, you didn't That was go back when Todd Gurley was Gurley. Aaron Rodgers, 20 for 33 for 104 yards. How good is Kyler Murray? I mean, I mean, think, think about this. Because he actually put points up on San Francisco. San Francisco's defense is just, they're, they're legit. They are so hard to move the ball on and do anything on. And, and Kyler Murray played him two out of three weeks, had great fantasy days. Uh, the mean, Cardinals were the closest to beating them twice than almost anybody else in the league have, has done. A, a graphic came up on the Red Zone channel yesterday. If you look at the numbers for Tom Brady and Kyler Murray – Heading into this past week. Passing numbers? Passing numbers. So you're talking yardage, passer rating, touchdown to interception ratio, average yards per target, everything. Total, uh, almost, they're almost identical. Yeah, across, across the board. The board almost. Total yardage, everything. Except one of these guys is electric with his feet and can pick up first downs and touchdowns on the ground. A lot of, and he's a top five guy right now, Kyler Murray, in terms of on the season. So a lot of optimism for the future. Uh, if you have Kyler Murray in a dynasty league, and if you're uh, a Cardinal fan, you got some hope. Sure. Aaron Rodgers, though, very, very disappointing performance. Uh, not to rub salt in the wound, but it was like last week, it was Aaron Rodgers or Jameis Winston. Aaron Rodgers or, you know, do you take the matchup situation or do you take the guy that can go out there and give you a number one week? And the truth is he he's not. That one number one week against Oakland was the mirage that will bury you. Oh, for yeah. Aaron Rodgers because he's finished outside the top 25 times. And that is a huge difference. You know, we're talking about, okay, Russ finishes as quarterback 14. When you finish outside the top 20, you're talking about nine points, you know, 10 points. Like th games that are th – th those are now a really – He gets the Giants in Washington. That's his next two matchups. That's really good. <laughs> That's, I mean, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm in on Rodgers for those, but – if like if if you're depending on Aaron Rodgers right now for your playoff run, two of the games are Chicago and in Minnesota. I'm I'm out. I I will he, be looking to move on. He started the year with Chicago and Minnesota. Both were very poor games. Denver, who's a good pass defense, poor game. Then he played Philly, where they they had no secondary at all. They were all injured. Torched him, was the number two quarterback. If you look and just go through matchups, good or bad, Dallas the next week, that's a bad matchup. He was bad. Detroit the next week, that's a good matchup. He was good. So Aaron Rodgers. I would Do you think he's begging for Mike McCarthy back? <laughs> no. 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 Because no. they're, they're eight they're, and three. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if I have Aaron Rodgers, I'm playing him the next two weeks. But get your get your quarterback ready for weeks fifteen and sixteen so you aren't tempted. Like he is going to be a siren because I I think you'll have great weeks against which the will Giants make it hard to bench him against and Chicago. it will make it very difficult. So have your plan ready so you don't crash your boat into the rocks. Find a lawyer, write up a contract <laughs> with yourself that forces you. The contract hey, oh, will force you to you, pull him yeah, from you the line. Here's what you, you, that's what you do. One hundred percent. Come week fifteen, you drop Aaron Rodgers for the quarterback you're picking up. And your opponent's going to go, oh, is this going to be a thing? Are we going to get all of our listeners to drop Aaron Rodgers and, heading into Chicago? And then they're going to pick him up and go, oh, I'm going to play him against you. What an idiot. Landmine. 
<laughs> send us a picture of if you're Aaron Rodgers drop heading into week 15. Oh, all right. Although Minnesota is actually not the worst matchup for passing. Yeah, yeah but it's in, 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 in Minnesota. Divisional matchup on the road. Here's the thing. I have two other players I want to talk about in the stinkers at quarterback. The first one, I couldn't be more disappointed in a performance from a team than I was this week in Oak with yes. the Oakland Raiders. I invited the entire team uh, to come over, and I had a very fatherly, I'm disappointed with you discussion. <laughs> They're all grounded. Mm. No devices. That's good. No friends. No TV. Early bedtime for a while. I couldn't have. What an egg they laid. Just disgusting performance from Carr, from the entire offense, from the defense. Well, I mean, was, there were people that thought about starting the Raiders defense this past week. It was nice when you invited them over. It was a short trip from Oakland because they were not in New York. Right. They, they never made that trip. No, they did not. So that was so disappointing. Uh, they got smashed 34-3. to Derek Carr was not stream worthy like we oh. thought he would be. 15 for 27, 127 yards. Got pulled at the end of that. It didn't Third even quarter, finish the yeah, game. Yeah, not, yeah. not because – not. I mean – it wasn't like he got benched for play. It was just, we've got no chance to win this game. Let's keep him healthy and get back to Oakland. Carson Wentz. Oh, Third, he, here was the funny thing, and I tweeted this out. He passed the ball 45 times. He completed 73% of his passes. He had his highest yardage total in five weeks. That was his highest? Yes, 256 yards. He, had, he, was a, he took part in four turnovers and – Fantasy owners more than anybody else. What do I do? What do they do with Carson Wentz against Miami next week? Then the Giants in Washington. These next three weeks should be auto smash Carson Wentz plays. And do you really look at it and say yes if Lane Johnson is there, or yes if Alshon Jeffrey is there, or are you not willing to burn down with Carson Wentz right now? Because these three matchups should be he should be winning you playoff game. If if Lane Johnson and Alshon Jeffrey are both active. I'm playing him in these matchups. I, you know, we've you, seen. You're in this situation. I have him. You're going I, into the playoffs. You have Carson Wentz. I've got Carson Wentz, and now Ryan Tannehill. And and if Lane Johnson and Alshon Jeffrey are available for the next game, I will play Carson Wentz. If those guys aren't there, then that's that's a real that's a real pivot. I mean, he's not a bad quarterback. He has been playing poor. He's trying to do way. There too There were much. a lot of drops in this game too. Not that he didn't – he, he, he is to be blamed immensely, but there were drops, and he's missing all his weapons. Yeah, you'd like to see him hit those you know eight-yard running backs that are wide open right in front of him instead mm -hmm. of launching it down the field over and over. But if he had weapons that could catch the ball, I mean, he's playing with backups to the backups across the board. So this is just a matter of what weapons he has available. Uh, you know, Miami, the Giants, the Redskins, these are salves for poor play. Yeah, it's, it'd be a, a tough bench in those ones. And they're big games for the Eagles as a whole because you look at this, they should win their next three games on paper and then be facing Dallas, who has tough matchups. And that could be sure. that could be the division, that final game against Dallas. So uh, let's look at running backs. He was one of the ones I invited over. Josh Jacobs, <laughs> 10 for 34. I mean – very bizarre. Only in on thirty nine percent of snaps. Like, what? What are you doing? What are you doing? I I, th I think you genuinely this throw is throw the know, game. Away. I think this is a throw out game. I'm not going to uh, overreact to Derek Carr's poor play or Josh Jacobs' involvement or whatever the the game script was. This game got out of hand super early. A defensive touchdown early for the Jets. Um, it is just this is one where you crumple it up put it in the garbage can, and act like the week didn't happen. That's how I view the whole Oakland side of things. You have to with the amount of touches Jacobs was getting. And when they win, he's great. 24 touches, 62% of snaps, seven touchdowns in their victories, no touchdowns, 14 snaps, 48% of snaps. To I'm sorry, 14 touches, 48% of snaps in all their losses. Aaron Jones. It was not an Aaron Jones day. Yeah, I mean, if your name's not Kenyon Drake, you can't run against the 49ers. <laughs> Well, here's here's the thing. I just did a, a quick look. Uh, so Aaron Jones, I mean, 13 carries. It was terrible, 38 yards. Last week, 13 carries, 93 yards and three touchdowns. But here's what I wanted to look at. Devontae Adams has been back for three weeks. 
Aaron Rodgers' number one passing target. In those three games, Aaron Jones now has four targets total. And that was when he would – before that, seven targets, eight targets, seven, four, eight, when, when Devontae Adams was out. Like, that's – that's a big deal. Now, Aaron Jones is still a a top running back, a, a, at least a top 24 running back that I'm going to play week in and week out. But that's very concerning. If he is now not involved in the passing game because it, I mean, Devontae Adams is back hogging, up, hogging these targets, that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, Jamal Williams was still involved in the passing Jamal game. Jamal Williams will always be involved, though. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. No, no, no. I know. I'm I think he's the, bringing up the eight targets for Jamal Williams. Yes, the the eight targets for Jamal Williams this last game. I don't think they're trying to make some uh, declaration that Jamal Williams is the pass catching guy, and it's not Aaron Jones because they've they've used both guys this season. I think it just so happened that the drives, you know, they kind of split drives, and you know, the, when Jamal Williams was in was when the ball was being looked that way. I'm I'm not. I'm not cooling on Aaron Jones. I, this was a really tough matchup. Okay. There's like real negative game or real positive game script for the running back to catch some targets against the Chargers three weeks ago, and he caught one pass. Well, without Devontae Adams, Jones's floor was higher than it yes. seems to be right now. Chris Carson stunk it up. We've talked yeah. about him. Uh, whether he's punished, I think that punishment, the extent of that will simply be, you know, some reduced snaps. It's not going to be a benching. They can't afford that. David Montgomery – was mm. awful, just mm. awful. He's averaged three yards per touch over his last three games. He is not trustworthy, and that's hard because next week is Detroit. Detroit is uh, – they've been ranked dead last in, in fancy points given up to running back. Okay. I'm, yeah, it's it, tough. You know, David Benny Snell might be a better play, you know what I mean, than David Montgomery. David Montgomery. Uh, Saquon Barkley. What oh, you, no. Uh, that, oh, that one. He that had one two hurts. receptions, including a really bad drop. This this is where I don't understand is why are they not getting him involved in the passing game the way I mean I get it like you, you want running backs on teams that are winning when you're losing you're not that great for fantasy except except last year when Saquon was on a terrible Giants team and they dumped him the ball over and over and he made big plays yeah well I w I've been running from Saquon for the last two weeks and I don't want him in the playoffs because we don't know what the true health of that ankle is. And what that involvement means in the offense on a bad team with tough matchups. They have to go into Philadelphia after they play Green Bay. After that, it's fine. Yeah, after that, well, you get Miami, Miami and yeah. Washington. Miami's week 16, though, right? So uh, that would be a very nice capstone if you're in the title game. But you got to get there. I just think that Saquon isn't, you know, two receptions. That's a problem. Yeah, yes. that's a big problem. That's a big problem. And so he hasn't given you big a big game in a while. And this is the Chicago defense. They were allowing a huge market share to the running back. In terms of receptions? In terms of receptions. And Saquon with just the three targets. Very very troubling indeed. Well, and Chicago was in the game. You know, they are, I'm sorry, the yeah. Giants were in the game. So I, it just seems like you're not going to get those kind of performances from him right now. Uh, anybody else you want to talk about at the running back position just before the, we jump into the Kind of just receivers? the, uh, like the Jalen Samuels as the – de facto go to full time handcuff for James Conner. Like, that's gone. Poof. Yeah. Uh, Benny Snell, Snell smoke bomb. Snell looked pretty good. And he yeah, Benny Snell is he's fine. It, Twenty one for ninety eight. It was a very plus matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals. But once again, this just means if James Conner is actually healthy and playing, he's the dude. because uh, but Jalen Samuels is Close to worthless unless you're in a full point PPR. Yeah, I've downgraded him to Jalen Samuel. <laughs> you taking away letters? I'm taking away the you didn't duplication. Just, you didn't just, just go like full Jalen like Samu? <laughs> no, he's just one man now. He's disappearing like yeah. Back to the Future. Yeah, pretty much. Wide receivers, we've talked about it. Amari Gooser. He's one, dead. He's one dead. One target. Me. He's dead to me. Kind of. Yeah, uh, that's not you know, really he, one target, right? Right, because he had, you know, he was targeted elsewhere where he caught a reception, but it came back on penalty. Play never happened. He caught a catch. It never happened. Never, total fabrication. <laughs> Tyler Lockett, one for thirty-eight on two targets, was coming back off the injury. Do you just forget about it? I mean, the matchup was there. Yeah, he, I mean, you you worried he missed a lot of practice this week. I wasn't sure how involved he would be. 
two targets, is not very involved. One of them was a nice deep play. Uh, going up against Minnesota, I'm I'm fine with him next week. Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones uh, both had disappointing weeks, no touchdowns, but Marvin Jones had 11 targets with Driscoll, and Kenny Galladay had just four. Driscoll, he loves Marvin. Yeah, Driscoll is probably going to be the guy the rest of the year. I've got a plan. They've talked about the fact that Matthew Stafford may be shut down. I think they'll shut him down. Why mess with his back when he's your quarterback? You know, we just talked about how young he is. They're three seven and one. That the is season crazy. is over. That is cr- Matthew Stafford is thirty six and a half years old. <laughs> At least Matthew Stafford has played in the 31. NFL. He will be That's he will be turning thirty two in February. Yes, it he's is. He's played in the NFL for twenty two seasons. <laughs> he you- started when he was twelve? Like I don't get it. He, how is he only thirty one still? I don't know. But that's, that's great. I mean, that's good news for, for the Lions because I think Stafford is a really good quarterback. There's a lot of teams out there that would love to have a oh, 31-year-old yes. Matthew Stafford. But moving forward, do you have more confidence in Jones than Galladay on the basis that he's getting more targets? Galladay has been the wide receiver 17, 66, and 32 with Driscoll. No, I, I, All of a sudden, your locked and loaded smash plays are looking like not the guys that are going to win you a week. And I know that Marvin did come through the, the, the first time they played Chicago – with, with Driscoll, but I, I I would not be looking to play Marvin. Any it, it maybe a wide receiver three flex play, but it's it's tough in the streets to play those guys right now. Are you backing away from Emmanuel Sanders after the one target, one catch in Baltimore next week at New Orleans? The ribs might have been an issue. You know, you got, you brought up Debo's two targets. I mean, this was a game script that yes, there were big plays on offense for Jimmy G. But it wasn't the game script. I mean, they were wi- they were whooping their butts. I yeah. mean, short. I, they started with a touchdown from the two yard line. Yeah, but Baltimore, New Orleans. I think that the game script will be more competitive, so that I'm I'm good still playing Sanders. You know, I I feel like I'm it, a little hesitant. I would rather be out on both guys, not because and this and I love Emmanuel Sanders, and I'm all in on the talent of Debo Samuel. This is really just I believe this is a low volume offense where the number one target is George Kittle and now you're splitting the leftovers between two really good options, they can each have a good game, but I, I just don't want to bank on five or fewer targets if that's what ends up happening, and that's what looks like I would probably project. So, uh, yeah, I, I would like to pivot, especially this week at Baltimore. Yeah, I think I'm on that side where I'm trying to get some upside, and I don't know how much they'll be in Baltimore myself. But uh, Cortland Sutton, just one catch yeah, on eight targets. That's not, a, that's not a good number. for real. <laughs> Remember last week when Brandon Allen was the future? Mm. Uh, well, I, d- I do not. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see if it's Drew Locke this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Hilton had the bad game. DJ Chark had a, a bad one. Six targets, five catches, 38 yards, no touchdowns. Gets Tampa Bay next week. Uh, I'm yeah. back in. <laughs> Crowder. <laughs> Crowder was, was not good. Very, very bizarre to see Jamison Crowder with only two targets in a game where Sam Darnold and the Jets played very well. You just yeah. throw it away. Yeah, you Cincinnati, throw it away. Miami. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm going to st- stick with Jamison Crowder going forward. All right, Darren Waller, just three catches on six targets, 41 yards. Is, is it time to panic? Well, it's, I wouldn't be panicking because he's still – You don't I, have a choice. He's Well, he's still a tight end one. If, are you, if you're expecting him to be a top three guy – like we looked like he was trending towards, then yeah, you should be panicking. But he's well, he's still a fine weekly put, play. Put it this way, you're you're not panicking. You don't really have a choice unless you do, and a choice would be like Ryan Griffin. Would you rather no. rest of season I'll have play Ryan Waller. Griffin or Waller? I'll no, play Waller. I'll play Waller because he's the only one with the ability to put up a, a Kittle line, a one twenty one and one. Eh, I don't they, know. I mean, you've got two performances where Ryan Griffin has been the number one tight end on a week. Sure, already. Sure, but I to me, there's more. Uh, regularity to Waller, but maybe maybe it's they did, worth a thought. They just missed on a touchdown but, uh, as well. All right. We talked about how bad tight ends were. Yeah, they were terrible. Hollister, two for 22. Ugh. The Vance dance was uh, a one catch for one yard dance. Ooh, that's not a good dance. That is and a- Mason Rudolph benching. Oh, yeah. Like Mason Rudolph will not be starting for the Steelers. I don't think There's he will be no either. no way against – I mean, it, they're going back and playing – this next week in that crazy matchup again that where the brawl came out. I, I think I think you bench Rudolph in part. It takes some of those emotions out. 
So Duck Duck Goose. Yep. All the way up the board. That's true. And then uh, Cameron Bray returned <laughs> returned to zero <laughs> catches. Jonu Smith zero uh, targets with Delaney out. So when you look at the landscape. Just know that if you started a tight end, they stunk if it wasn't one of those top three this week. That's basically how it went. And you, like Jason said, it's not th- you. three it's for 13. It's not you. It's, it's them. them. <laughs> you know, There's a reason for years they've, we've talked about the Barfy tight end right. landscape. We had hoped that Darren Waller had ascended into guaranteed levels. Uh, there was hope for Hawkinson to start the year. That hope has been lost. I feel like at the very beginning of every season, it's like, oh, you know what? There are enough tight ends this year. <laughs> lies. Always yeah. lies. Well, yes. We got Jared Cook now. I mean, Jared Cook yes. seems like a very okay. reliable star. I would agree with that. And he He's had back. two other almost touchdowns in that game. Dude, there was yeah. a pass where Drew Brees threw it to – Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He threw it so far. It, it was the worst pass Drew Brees has made in a long time, and it was caught. Jared Cook skied – I mean, he would have dunked on a 15-foot hoop to get that ball. Yeah, it's true. He's playing great. Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Mm -hmm. We're going to jump into the mailbag for a couple questions. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right, if you have a question for the show, go over to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button, or you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Keep them short to the point. We'll get him on the show. Here is a Monday night question from Charlie in Sacramento. I need five Charlie. points to win to mm-hmm. keep my playoff hopes alive. I can start Brandon Cooks or Hollywood Brown. Who has the higher floor? Oh, man, that is so You need tough. five points. Hollywood Brown has a history of uh, two for 20 if he doesn't have the big play. If he but did. he could win you the week on one 40-yard, 50-yard catch. Brandon gonna, Cooks hasn't played in a while. They're back to back in my rankings. I I'm going to go with Marquise Hollywood Brown um, because he's done it more. He's done it more recently as well than Cooks. There is, you know, you you saw this with Sterling Shepard, right? He was active. He was back on the field. And, oh, hold up! He's showing signs. He's he's out. And you know that was several weeks ago when Sterling Shepard was coming back. That's in the range of outcomes here is some kind of head issue that has been keeping Cooks off the field to take him off the field again, and then you don't hit your five points. Does Cooks feel uh, – yes, we need to factor that in. But let's say Robert Woods is out again, and Brandon Cooks is starting. Is it still Hollywood Brown? you still that nervous about the injury? I think Brown can get five points. It's Jalen Sanders. It's Hollywood for me. It's a it's a tough matchup, but I I, if you only need five, I think Marquise Brown's going to get it. And I know that pains you, Mike, because in a in a in a matchup that matters to you with someone else, you need Hollywood Brown to score fewer than seven fewer than seven points. Yeah. All right. Here's a good question from Lathan and Charlotte, a dynasty oriented question, saying, "Look, based on what we've seen so far in the field this year, how would you rank?" Your top three Wookiee. <laughs> we have been watching. Uh, we just saw oh, Force Amanda. Awakens. So I must have. Uh, the kids are wanting to go through them before uh, the this, new one. This is All the right. way. The, so the top three Wookiees. <laughs> the would top be... three Wookiee wideouts. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be a great wideout. Uh, a Wookiee? Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. We'll just go rookie. We'll throw... go rookie. All right. Based on talent and what you've seen, obviously Hollywood's in, in that discussion. Debo. Is probably at the top. McLaurin, McLaurin is, is at the lot. top. You, uh, right now, Nikhil Harry getting back on the field, being involved. DK Metcalf, has, McCall Hardman has been great. There are a lot. There are of great options. So, who would your top three be? Hollywood is in it for me. I think the combination of that offense is speed and well, talent. They, he, they're just saying based on talent. Based on talent alone, who's oh, your top three wide receivers talent. based solely on talent? Number one for me, McLaurin. Terry McLaurin. Number two, Debo Samuel. Number three, Hollywood Brown. It would be those three, but I would put Brown ahead of Debo. Okay. I think – I don't know where – it, but, but I think A.J. Brown would slide in there for me. As, Into the top three? Yeah, as, as far as just talent goes. He's been great. And we never – we really haven't got to see anything from other rookies like Andy Isabella – 
like Paris Campbell, very limited Nikhil Harry this year. Yeah. So uh, Jalen Hurd. Nikhil Harry's touchdown grab was incredible. Yeah. Then the following drops were less incredible. Fear. But he should have a role. First round yeah. guy. So, all right. One more. Graham in St. Louis. I just won $10,000 thanks oh. to some advice from you guys. All right. We accept your donation. Uh, <laughs> so I thought it only appropriate to go buy a signed uh, jersey for the top scorer on my team, Chris Godwin. Thanks for all the advice all these years. Congratulations, so he's Graham. Just, he's just telling us how rich he is. Well, you know what? Good for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Is this Jaden Graham? Pro <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> all right. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Nick Chubb signed jersey. Brooks, are you always looking? <laughs> are you oh! always trying to find something that goes for $55? Maybe. It's yeah. the sweet spot. Nick Chubb signed jersey, $55.28 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get in on some sweet memorabilia. You got Black Friday coming up. You got Christmas time. There'll be some Wookiees around Christmas. That's for sure. All right, that is it today. Waivers tomorrow. Good luck in the Monday night game. Whatever you need to happen, it's definitely going to happen for you. Totally going to happen. No, 100% not a problem. guaranteed. Book fam, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.